Starting off with the son of the Black Panther, a man who respects the family tradition of naming your superhero persona after a type of cat, T'Chaka, known by his fellow heroes as Cool Tiger. Cool Tiger is, of course, the Prince of Wakanda. He grew up in the most technologically advanced society Earth 982 has ever seen. This is also the Earth where everything happens about 15 years before when it happened on Earth 616, so many of the heroes we know are retired and their kids have started taking their places. Cool Tiger, he's a lot like his dad. Determined, strong leader, excellent fighter, but him and his dad differ in a big way. Most versions of T'Challa, he is an enhanced man, but the cat part is a suit. It's a suit he puts on. T'Chaka is actually a guy that transforms into a cat, so he's closer to something from the Animorph Kids book series. The panel where he transforms is literally the cover of one of those books. T'Chaka's cat form gives him all the powers T'Challa has and his suit gives him. Cole Tiger has helped the Avengers of his world and later joined the reserves. This Cole Tiger is actually the second Cole Tiger to exist. T'Challa was Cole Tiger on Earth 355 a few years before this one debuted. Cool thing to know about that, this version of T'Challa was based on the original design for him and it's hard to imagine that the Black Panther was once called Cole Tiger and wore bright yellow. Wonder Woman's son from an alternate timeline has only appeared about eight times and has suffered so much. He also has one of the coolest names I've ever heard, Hunter Prince. Cool name, cool mom, but not a cool dad. His dad in this alternate timeline is the darkness, a fear creature. The darkness found the dark feelings Wonder Woman kept deep inside and latched onto those, infecting her, which caused Hunter. It happened so the darkness could eventually have a new kind of embodiment in the future. Obviously, Wonder Woman was not on board with this plan, so she sent little Hunter to the only couple she trusted to raise the boy in a pure and good manner, the Kents, Clark and Lois. However, in the past, Amazons who give birth to sons often send them away because all Amazons were women. So Hunter thought that that was the reason his mom sent him away, because he was a boy and not because he had the potential to become a vessel for darkness. Hunter lived a good life with the Kents, but eventually his dad started destroying the earth. Hunter was sent to Olympus for protection, and I will say it worked. He survived, but his adopted family didn't. He gets involved with a bunch of time travel stuff. The good thing that comes out of it is he gets to confront his mom about abandoning him. Eventually, there is a big final battle that ends with mother and son hugging it out. Hunter is still alive, and he was a more recent DC character edition, so there is hope he will be seen again. Peter Parker is honoring his family's legacy by naming his two kids after two important family members. In the world the maker messed with to make it so no heroes came to be, Earth 6160, Peter Parker actually got to settle down for once and live a quiet life. He married MJ and had two cute kids, Richard and May. This is a pretty new Earth, it debuted a year ago, but Richard and May debuted almost six months ago. They really are Peter's kids. Richard is super smart for his age, a proper prodigy, and May is showing promise in the arts. In this world, May is actually the reason the Spidey suit takes on this iconic red and blue. Before, her dad was wearing an all black suit and that really scared May, so she helped her dad redesign it to be less scary, creating the iconic Spider-Man suit we all love. May was the first of the two kids to swing around the city with her dad. Both kids seem to have inherited the Parker's sass and humor, which is the most important thing. The Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 3 comics, they are still coming out, so if you haven't picked up the story yet, consider this your sign for the universe to start. I'm including this one for me and any millennials out there that refer to their pets as their fur babies or kids. One of my favorite heroes, Sleepwalker, he created Dog Walker. He created a dog for himself. Sleepwalker's thing is that he was accidentally bonded to a human, so he tries to understand what it's like to be a human so him and his host can get along better. He noticed lots of people had dogs, so he made himself Dog Walker as a way to better understand human nature. Tears were shed when I found this out, and I'm not ashamed of that. Dog Walker has appeared two times since his debut in 2018. King Black Bolt and Queen Medusa of the Inhumans royal family gave birth to their son, Ahura. However, Medusa wasn't allowed to do that. Turns out they needed permission from the genetic council to have a kid, and they didn't get that permission slip, so Ahura gets to suffer for it. As a child, he is taken by the council to the Terrigan Mist, a mist that alters the biology of Inhumans. It did give him his notable power, which is the small silver lining here. He can split his soul, creating psychic phantom versions of himself that are able to to fight and use weapons kind of like an army. Then the council ships this kid off to Earth, and to make matters worse, when he gets to Earth, his ship crashes. It's 
pretty much the worst day of this kid's life. Don't get me wrong, like other super kids, Ahura does have other really bad days. Like, for example, that time a member of the genetic council kidnapped him to steal his powers, or the time he was locked up and driven to insanity that got worse as his powers grew, or that time he was replaced by a Skrull, or that time Kang the Conqueror manipulated him and he had to possess Kang to get him to leave him alone, or the time when he had to watch his dad be a father figure to someone else when he never got that treatment and that had to sift through his dad's traumatic memories to save Black Bolt from a monster. Yeah, he could have had it better. That last one did have a positive outcome, Hura understood his father better and they were able to reconcile. Carrie Allen is Barry Allen's kid and dresses like Kid Flash. She originated in the Superman and Batman Generation series. The series follows the two heroes through their life, including their family life, and that's where Carrie comes in. The focus might be on Superman and Batman, but the other members of the Justice League and their families are featured too. Carrie Allen takes after her father. She is fast, funny, and fearless. She single-handedly goes after Bruce Wayne Jr.'s Batman when he's acting a bit unhinged and out of line. She loses the fight with him, but it was brave of her to go. She later ends up in the mountains with her boyfriend Green Lantern to track down Sinestro. Pretty much all the powers Barry Allen's Flash had, his daughter has too, so she is quite powerful and quite fast, she's just still figuring it all out. Offspring, son of Plastic Man, he had to make the list because his name fits it perfectly. Don't worry, Plastic Man didn't name his son Offspring, that would be mean. He actually named him Ernie Luke O'Brien. Just because Plastic Man was his superhero father doesn't mean he was a good one. Plastic Man was not super involved in Offspring's life and it did have an effect on the young hero. Offspring started out joining a street gang at a young age, age 10. Offspring's mom, Angel, called his father hoping that since he's a superhero, he would be able to get Offspring off the streets. Turns out Plastic Man is a big coward and made Batman do it instead. Plastic Man, better be careful with that choice, we all know how fast Batman will adopt a troubled kid. Eventually Offspring and his dad repaired their relationship, Offspring became one of the recruits for the Teen Titans. While on the team, he saved depowered heroes and assisted on missions. Like his dad, Offspring, he's stretchy. He is also able to do the whole shape-shifting thing too. Earth 6706 is home to quite an interesting royal family. Family, five kids, Remy, Valeria Fenn, Ari, Johnny and Aaron, and two parents, Namor and Susan Storm. This might come as a shock to some considering Susan is usually seen with Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four. Her and Reed are considered the first family of Marvel, so Susan, what is going on? Well, that first family stuff is from Earth 616. We are on Earth 6706. The new Exiles Earth right now, somewhere where Marvel writers finally got to explore a relationship that's been a long time coming. Namor has been interested in the Invisible Woman for a long time, but she, on Earth 616, has always rejected him because she belongs with Mr. Fantastic. But that would be an interesting relationship to explore. So how do you do that without destroying a fan favorite couple? You create a whole new world. In this world, Susan and Namor got together and had five kids. Their firstborn, Remy, does the most, he is the oldest. He is also Gambit in this universe. The Black Panther of this world is super evil and Remy was a key player in his defeat. Remy has had quite the life. He joined the super team, the Exiles, and later became the King of Atlantis. Though he is the Gambit of his world, he doesn't have many shared powers with his Earth 616 counterpart, and no card throwing either, unfortunately. His powers are closer to what his dad can do, plus telekinesis and force fields. Nightcrawler named his daughter Blue, and I can't decide if that is hilarious or wildly uncreative, but I guess it can be both at once. Blue was part of adult Franklin Richards Earth 811's new mutants team. She was created for the Days of Future Past timeline from the 90s. Her parents both passed during a sentinel attack on the X Mansion. This is the Earth where sentinels rule North America, and mutants are either deceased or on their way to it. It's assumed that Blue is just like her dad and that all the powers he had, she has. She has demonstrated she has the ability to teleport herself and others, and she seems well versed in mutant history. Blue has only appeared twice, the first time in New Mutants Annual 6 and then briefly in X-Men Annual 14. 
This last one we are going to keep short and sweet because these kids have only ever showed up once. Thomas Jefferson, Nina Susan, and Danielle Page Guthrie are the children of Samuel Guthrie, Cannonball, and Lila Cheney. These two are already not the most popular X-Men couple to ever exist, which is criminal because they are awesome. We know next to nothing about their family here on Earth, 41,001, but just from looking at them, you can tell who the kids take after. Thomas is clearly his mother's son. He dresses like he loves her style of music, and Nina is her father's daughter dressed all fancy like her dad. The littlest one turned away and still a baby, so only time will tell for Danielle. I'm guessing the kids are mutants and have powers similar to their parents because that would make sense. Their world, Earth 41001, is a possible future for the X-Men, one where all the villains finally did the smart thing and worked together to attack the X-Men all at once. I'm not saying it was the right thing to do, but it was the smart thing to do. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make your mark on the comment section down below. Let me know what you think of all these Nepo babies. This is Juliana signing off. Bye!